Coach, already an emotional game against USD on Thursday, and then you make it senior night on top of that, which adds even more emotion into it. You get Lane Severn in the ball game, and boy, Lane responds the way a senior should on a night like that. Yeah, Lane was tremendous. Uh, you know, hit some big shots early, had some you know awesome energy plays for us, five offensive rebounds. But uh, the stats didn't begin to tell the story on how he impacted winning. He just did a really, really good job from start to finish, imposing his will on the game and making sure we came out successful. And not surprising in a game like that where you've got two very high-powered offensive teams, a lot of runs, especially in that first half. Yeah, there were. I think you know both teams uh, have the ability to score the ball in a lot of different ways, and you saw that at, at, at times and in stretches. And both teams defensively, I don't think you know always get enough credit either because I think or you know on, by the numbers we're probably the two best defensive teams in the league too. So there's also the ability for teams to get stopped. So. Overall, just you know, really great atmosphere, great college basketball game, and we were fortunate to come out with a win. Matt Mooney has put up some gaudy numbers against you, and he's put up some gaudy numbers against everybody else as well. I know you never would say this but to your team, certainly, but you're going to let him get his and try to limit everybody else because that's certainly what you did. I mean, he outscored the rest of his starting five. Yeah, I think, you know, th- th- during the course of the game and at the end of the game are two totally different yeah. scenarios because he rises to the occasion and makes big shots. So, you know, I think once you start to get to the la- last three minutes of the game, I don't think it's any secret they put the ball in his hands. And he's extremely confident, and he loves the big stage and the big shot. So, um, you know, certainly at that point in the game, we would love for somebody else to be taking the shots because I know – uh, how effective he's been, not only in every night out, but specifically against us in the past. He's had so many big shots late in the games. When you get a 16-point lead in the second half, was there any sense that your guys let the foot off the gas even a little bit at that point? No, I think we, you know we've had some challenges this year in terms of playing with a lead. I think when you're the team that's coming from behind, you have less to lose, mm-hmm. so it's just a little easier to make shots or you're playing with a little more freedom. And when you're the team that's up... You know, we're, we're, we need to continue to be more intentional and get a little bit better at having longer possessions and just manage the game a little more effectively because there's times where, you know, we just we play a fast, exciting style of play, and there's times in a game where you kind of need to slow down just a little bit and, and keep other teams from uh, pushing that pace back at you. And I think that, you know, credit to them is some of the things they were doing, and we need to be a little bit better at, at managing the games at, at that point in time as well. So you're in a tight game, emotional atmosphere, championships on the line, in-state rivalry, and then it takes 17 minutes to play the final few seconds of that game. That is where you have to rely on drawing into that focus and, and, and keeping your, your head in the game at that point, i got to imagine. Yeah, there are just a lot of calls late in that game that you need to go to the monitor for, and that's the protocol. And, and so anything under two minutes that officials aren't entirely sure of, that's what they need to do. And that seemed to come up quite a few times. So you're trying to make sure that your guys understand uh, each side of the scenario that could happen, whether you're able to to get the basketball or you're be on defense, what you need to do, how you need to execute and how you need to manage that possession. So there's a, Seemed like that uh, that last ten seconds did take forever. <laughs> and despite all that, your guys go five of six from the line, and so it didn't it didn't disrupt their focus in terms of that. No, and that's I think in a lot of games, you know, it comes down to the free throw line late, and you know we're able to make those five of those six, and you know that's important because you've got to find a way to close off those games, and our guys did that. The the boards were the one of the biggest differences. You were down ten on the boards at their place and up 11 at your place and then 14 offensive rebounds. Did you think rebounding was was a big key in this one? It was. I mean, I think that tells the story of which team's more aggressive and felt like at their place it was certainly the case for them and felt like here uh, we did the job that way. So, um, you know, rebounding's one metric or tangible uh, stat that you use to kind of try to evaluate your team or the game or how things are going. And I think in that, especially in a rivalry series like that, and the way our two teams have played uh, against each other, I think that's a, a stat that really stands out and was, what, what allowed us to come out with a victory. So then you close things out at Fort Wayne on Saturday, and the three-point line was very, very good to you in that game. Was that a point of emphasis against the Mastodons? You know, I, really we try to take what the defense you know gives us, and, and you know we try to move the ball and play with good pace offensively, and when we get a paint touch or we get the ball downhill on a drive and get it moving, 
uh, whatever shot is available at that point is we're comfortable taking. And um, just so happens that, you know, against mass downs, there was a lot of three point shots that, you know, that came available and our guys did a good job of, of knocking those down, especially in crunch time late. With a team that can score the basketball the way they can, it's got to be important to keep the ball out of their hands. And when you only turn it over four times, that's got to be a great number for you. Yeah, it is. They're, you know, they've got three guys that have all proven to be, you know, big time scorers in this league with Hero, Contra, and Scott. So, um, you know, the more opportunities they have, especially in transition, the more effective they're going to be in that endeavor. So you've got to make sure that you really value the ball, value possessions, get your defense set. And I think that that's what allowed us to, to kind of weather the storm is that we just, we made sure that we didn't give them any free possessions in transition. And unusual, you guys usually do not get outscored at the free throw line, but they outscored you at the free throw line in that game. Yeah, they did. And I, you know, I think they had a lot of possessions. They were, you know, playing, um, you know, trying to speed up the tempo and kind of drive it at us, especially when we had a little bit of a lead there. And, um, you know, again, it's like we talked about earlier, there's, you don't have a whole lot to lose. So you're really trying to force action. They did a good job. They got to the foul line and, um, you know, they're able to cash in. So let's look ahead now to the Summit League Tournament. You go in as the top seed after uh, winning the conference for the first time outright without sharing the title with anybody else. How does this one feel going into this tournament where the target is clearly on your back as opposed to last year where you were able to go in with maybe expectations being a little bit lower? Yeah, I think, you know, the good part is I I still believe we have yet to play our best basketball. Hmm, I don't think there's been a whole lot of games where we've come away thinking that we've you know, played the best we can, or we've certainly played perfectly. So instead of, you know, worrying about everybody else, we're going to try to keep worrying about being the best version of ourselves that we can and try to work this week in practice to improve on some of the areas we need to. And um, as as we approach a game with Western on Saturday, we're going to look at it just like we've looked at every game all year, that that's the game we're preparing for, that's the task at hand, and it's a, it's a one-game schedule right now. We need to worry about getting a win on Saturday and everything will take care of itself from there. The two things you did very well against them and both of the wins was limiting them, especially in the first half. They shot 37% in the first half against you the first game and just 32% in the second half, especially. They were they were really, really struggling from threes. And so defensively, you took them out of the game early. If our defense is engaged and intentional to what we're trying to do early on, it usually leads to us getting a pretty good flow offensively and we're able to maybe get some separation. So thought our guys did a really good job in the first half at both places, locking in and doing what we needed to do, and it allowed us to you know, be in position where we had reasonable leads both times. It's, it's going to take that similar defensive effort to start uh, because they're kind of a streaky team mm-hmm. and they can get it going. Well, and Webster's one of those key guys. I mean, here's a guy that was 50% against you in that first meeting, 17 points, and then just one of 10 from the floor. Did you change the defensive effort that much on him the second time around? Well, he had a lot more focus and emphasis on him, and I think our guys had a much greater sense of pride after what he had done the first time. So uh, we realize that he's able to um, to get them going, and he's he's kind of become their guy as the season's moved on. Even though he's a freshman, he stepped up and scored it big and made big shots. So we knew we had to neutralize him a little bit and definitely did a much better job that second you know, the second time around. And then Brandon Gilbeck's a force on the inside, top 10 in rebounding, number three in defensive rebounding, and then, of course, his ability to block shots. Hey, he's got an impact at the rim and able to, you know, force you to take more jump shots maybe than you normally like. Um, you know, they started him on Telling Hughes, which was a little bit proved to be a little bit of a tough matchup for them with him, um, and I think it, you know, got him in the foul trouble. So, they're, uh, you know, most nights are a good defensive team. There's a lot of different ways they can, they can guard. So we're going to have to be prepared for a lot of different scenarios come Saturday. 